It's great to have you here, and I'm, I'm really it. grateful that you made I'm it through that. And, yeah, I've got a lot of uh, a lot of friends who have who've, uh, been through something similar, so that's a blessing to be here and be able to drink whiskey and, and, and tea with and tea. our friends. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've got so I heard rice mentioned. And so I'm making a sticky rice choux pour, which I think we've had on the show before, just because it's such, it's such like a, it's it's one of the only teas that we have that has both the earthy fermented tea profile, which is gonna, I'm excited for you to try because yep. when people come in and they're like, I like whiskey, I always serve them fermented tea because it ages, it's got a vintage, it's dark, it's earthy, it's got a lot of those leather, tobacco, lumber, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, loam, petrichor notes that people like about whiskey. And then this one has this additional herb, so it's the tea plant fermented plus an herb called uh, Semnostachia munglaensis, which is a, a, a plant that is not rice, it has nothing to do with rice, it smells like sticky rice. And so they call it sticky rice fragrance, and it's supposed to be good for your digestion. And so it blends, they blend it with puar here. And so this is a, a 2021, I believe, uh, 2021 sticky rice shoe puar. Let's see. Actually, I've got that. And we've done shoe puar on the store on, on the show before, but I don't think we've done this partic- particular one. And I've only ever tasted this twice, and every time I've tasted it, it's been one of those unusual flavor profiles where tea can taste like this. And yeah, this is this is this. Is, I, I'm I'm happy we're able to share this, and we have a rice whiskey absolutely to uh, to try with which it. which is which is in itself unusual unusual. I've never heard of it. I've heard I've had, we've had stuff with rice in it. But, mm-hmm. but I've never had a just rice whiskey, so no. that's exciting. Actually, I when we did our vault tour, uh-huh. I brought you a sample from a San Diego distillery that does uh-huh. a rice whiskey. Okay, so that, that you, whole that whole thing was kind of a blur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> memories of that it, whole that day it, are patchy. It normally is when you go to the vault, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't really, really remember being Seamus so shameless at the vault, but there's the video evidence, <laughs> yes. so, yeah. <laughs> there's a historical document. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my Irish alter ego. He doesn't come out all the time, but drinking whiskey definitely brings him out. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little smell, the hot dry smell. We've been kind of skipping the hot dry smell because it's uh, not as strong as the hot wet smell. But this is because it has that sticky rice and that petrichor note oh, from yeah, aged tea. It definitely does. You do get a little bit more you of a fragrance a little, on that's, there. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh man, that's just umami. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, the fermented teas are, are really, like I said, they're kind of the, the main teas that I, I, I whiskey people tend to resonate with. And this is a great, and, and for the rest of the world, they're kind of an acquired taste because they're earthy. Some people like they taste like dirt. Well, okay, sometimes they do in a nice way, if they're good. If they're bad, bad pu'ar, they will, a bad fermented pu'ar will taste like fish food. You know, oh, it's yeah, got this like gnarly, yeah. fishy taste. Yeah. It's gross. Um, it's a problem. But, uh, you know, a lot of times people have been traumatized by having bad Puar, and they're like, oh, I don't like puar, I don't like puar. So I'll serve them this because it's kind of a nice little gateway puar because it's got that extra sticky rice note. Kind of like jasmine tea is a good right. way to get into green tea. This is a good way to get into puar. And it's definitely one of our most popular teas at the tea house. Yeah, with jasmine tea, it's it's one and I'm done. That, that floral flavor, just it it's just becomes it, overpowering. Yeah, it gets a bit much real fast. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give you all a little rinse to rinse out your cup. Richard. I, re- I really appreciate you guys uh, allowing me to come over here. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks for coming. It was great having Absolutely. you. So let's talk about the whiskey for a minute. Let's do it. So this is J.T. Mellick. Okay, they are based out of Louisiana. And uh, this one is actually really special because it just came out, came into the into the Texas market. It is a Specs, ex- specs exclusive. Um, oh. I actually picked this one up in Colleen, Texas. Oh. Um, I was there over the weekend. Anyway, long story. Um, <laughs> I picked this up, and this is a single barrel, oh. cast strength, rice whiskey. From Louisiana? From Louisiana. Here, here's the thing. If you look at the front, it has a big crawfish on it. Yeah. Everybody sees that, and they're like, oh, that's crawfish whiskey, like Crab Trapper, right. if you've ever heard of Crab Trapper. Um, <laughs> it has nothing to do with that. Hold they, on, hold on. I need some ahead. explanation about that. Crab What's tra- Crab Trapper? Crab Trapper is a whiskey... <laughs> Made by made. invasive crab species in Maryland. 
and I saw bottles of it at Irene Tan's store. Absolutely. And I was tasting a lot of things, and that was one thing that I was not interested in oh. tasting. Oh my. And I still don't know whether it's uh, the crabs are in with the grains, and that's what makes it a whiskey, or whether it's infused with crab. It scares anyway, it the heck like, out of me. It tastes like crab. <laughs> I have to crab. say, I am intrigued. <laughs> Absolutely. Although this is, they're not made from crawfish, but no. the idea that you could make a, I think I sent, I sent one of y'all a, a, a link to this and I was like, or maybe it was Rex or someone, I sent someone a link to this and I was like, y'all gotta try this. But I do remember hearing about that. But I'd forgotten about that. We gotta try that at some point. <laughs> but okay, so this is not crawfish. So, no, no, this is 100% rice. So um, they actually have a rice farm, and they've had this rice farm for over 100 Hell years. yes. And what the, the thing is, uh, Louisiana is a huge producer of rice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> and the crawfish are there, and they have a symbiotic relationship yep. with yep, the yep, rice. Yep, 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 yep. And so they are a crawfish farm as well. Yes. So they are growing their own rice, their own variant of rice, just to make this whiskey. So this whiskey is unlike any other rice whiskey you're going to have because it's specific to their brand and to their property. So, so cool. I need to know. Well, I so I'm from Louisiana. I was born in New Orleans. And so anything that is got to do with Louisiana always interests me. Anything with a crawfish on it also. I used to have a yeah. pet crawfish mm -hmm. named Krishna. She's blue. I found her when I was a fishmonger at Quality Seafood in a bag. I brought her home. So strong crawfish connection. And so you're saying that the, the cultivar, the breed of rice is unique to this. Yes. So they're not, people aren't eating this rice. No, this is the, it is only So this is another, another uh, a seed to sip whiskey, yes. which yes. to date, you know, that's been one of my favorite whiskeys I've ever tried was that one from the, that, that Texas bourbon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was Wilson a seed, Farm, yeah, so. mm -hmm. yeah, it's seed to sip. And it was uh, what goes all the because the terroir is there and it's distilled on the land. It's fermented and distilled on the land that it's grown on, and that's special to me. Just from a tea yeah, absolutely. perspective, it's a lot like tea. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about this. And you pick this up in Colleen, so yeah, you absolutely. can't you can't get this at Specs here. No, no, because that's a single barrel just for that right. one. And the whole reason I wanted to pick up the single barrel because it showcases the whiskey in that one barrel. We're, most of the other ones are gonna be like small batch and they're gonna be a blend of, you know, 20 barrels. This one showcases just this one and obviously I've already dipped into it a little bit. <laughs> and, um, let's just say, I, I hope you guys aren't aren't uh, turned off by it. It's funny. I sure wasn't. It's funny. I was talking to a whiskey distillery that was experimenting with rice and uh, I said, and I was asking them, you know, how did their rice whiskey come out? And they had this look in their eyes like like something it was a trauma there was like what happened and they said that they blew two motors out because the <laughs> rice you know when you're cooking rice and and you're as, uh -huh. as well as when you're fermenting it gets it can get quite thick yes yeah. so it actually got so thick that the motor for turning the mash ended up jamming. They burnt out two motors. Oh, wow. And I've also heard the same thing happen with people working with rye as well, Absolutely. where the rye grain gelatinizes and it'll burn out the motor yep. of the distillery. Absolutely. <laughs> you got to get horses, you know, yeah. turn, yeah. in your, turn yeah. in your mash there. Yeah. Um, this is starting to get to like the place where we want it to oh, be. You okay. can see it's black, black, black. Okay. That's where we want it for this. So I'm ready for this, this right. yeah, let's crawfish go. free. Yeah, whiskey. and and just to let you know, it has no crawfish in it, and they actually, um, that like I said, they're symbiotic, and they work um, separately from each other. So like um, during one season, um, it's rice, then the next season it's crawfish. So um, it is a pure like uh, distilling season type thing. You know, they uh, they have to grow the rice, they have yeah, to do all yeah. of the thing, and that's part of their. Um, their livelihood is the rice as well. So they have, um, I think she said 500 acres of rice, but they don't use all of it for the bottle. Go ahead. They don't use all of it for the whiskey. There is a specific plot that they use for the whiskey, and then they do use the rice as this well. This is, that's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. It's Probably. really, it's unique. And of course, me being the, 
the guy I am. I love unique and different things. Um, look at me. I'm <laughs> unique and different, uh, as we all should be, right? Nobody nobody likes the same thing over and over again. If, the, if it was that, we'd be drinking bourbon, right? Like, come on. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Branch, Louisiana. I don't know where that is. Um, on the heel. Okay. The heel. Like so more, not far from the border from right. Texas. Right. Not okay. far. I bet she said alligators out the wazoo. Oh, yeah. So you got to watch out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is reminding me a lot of the um, wheat whiskey Mm -hmm. that we were trying. Again, softer, delicate, thin, crisp. See, yes, you still have that single grain situation mm-hmm. going on. Some I mean, it's, it's very different. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you right now, I definitely have not, I don't, not in like recent memory, have I smelled a whiskey that smelled like this. There's something mm-hmm. distinctly different here. I like it. It's nice. Okay. And there are, they are using the same barrels that, that you would use for a particular bourbon. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Number three char, you know, new American white oak barrels because they, they're, they're paving the way for rice whiskey. So they don't know what it's going to be like. Um, it's not bourbon because it doesn't have corn in it. So like, they're just like, we don't know. And so they tried it at a year old and they were like, nope. They tried it at two years old. They're like, nope, that's even worse. So they just let it sit. This is actually approaching five. It says four and a half years old because they do, like I said, they do distilling season. So when they're pulling the grain out is every six months. So it's like, um, it's, so it's like four and a half years old. Um, so it's really, it's really cool. It's really cool. I like this one a lot. Mm. I can't even pinpoint what I like about it yet, but Mm. it's so different. Something about it. It's so different. Going back to the tea, it brings mushroomy, earthy notes out of the whiskey. It's really crisp. Mm, It's it's very very clean and crisp and has this very narrow flavor profile. Mm -hmm. It's not just spread out all over my tongue. It's really, it's very concise. Yeah, it's very (laughs) concise. It's right down the middle. And it's very concise and it's very pure tasting. And I feel like for me, that must be the quality of the farming. Yeah. That's the yeah. quality of the, the environment yeah. that this is being grown in. And you don't have like rye brings a spicy note. Um, mm-hmm. Malt gives that multi funkiness. The corn gives like a dustiness and stuff like that. Think of rice just by itself. Yeah, it's very. It, I'm, I hate to say the word bland, but it's very mm-hmm. soft. Very soft, yes. and it doesn't. And and it presents that. Now, giving to you at cast strength, it's obviously you're going to get some some punch from the ethanol. But other, I mean, other than that, it's just super nice and crisp. You get a lot of vanillins from the yeah. from the barrel. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's very. It's very. It's very elegant. It's very like elegant and very. Um, yeah, I want to say like concise. Like mm-hmm. it, it's not, it's very, very like restrained, mm-hmm. but but complex at the same yeah, time. It's absolutely. a little bit hard to characterize, but it, I think this is my favorite thing I've had tonight. Well, it, but but that's that's the thing. It's it's complex, but yet it's easy to drink. So it's like mm. you know, even at cast strength, even at yeah. cast strength. Yeah, and I mean, I've I've put a little water with this as well, and it's. It, it, it shows up. And they, they only have a few offerings. They have this, their single barrel. They have a cast strength, which is their regular, yeah. but it's a small batch and their small batch. They have three offerings. Yeah. And they had thought about doing other types and they're like, no, we have our thing and we're going to stick to right. our thing. Right. And they've been doing it for a while. Um, they're fixing to come out with like a eight-year-old bottling cool. that's going to be age-stated and, very interested and stuff like that. Out. And they're getting pretty good production. I mean, if we can if we can get it here, so that's... that's uh, they actually do have a couple of single-barrel picks at the specs around here. I think one on Brody, maybe? Um, uh, you, they have an app. You can go to their app, and it'll tell you all the... Splash of water, a little sweeter, um, but brings out some more barrel spice characteris- characteristic, but it is still... Uh, a very, it, like I said, with the wheat whiskey, it's delicate. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it, yeah, it's got a really yeah. nice. And with the with this, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I haven't even tried the right, yeah. strict pairing yet. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, that no, was, no, it's, I'm this. Going, this is the type of tea that you when you're mixing whiskey with tea. This is the type of tea, and I get that yeah. sticky rice yeah. part of it. Like mm-hmm. it, it comes through. I feel they they complement themselves pretty well. Mm-hmm. Mm. But it's an earthy yeah. mushroom wow. as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a mushroom risotto. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like a mushroom yeah. risotto. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, really nice. Or even just like a, yeah, just, yeah, like a mushroom risotto. Or actually there's um, there's this dish that uh, my my rabbi and his family in China would make that was just rice with mushrooms and onions on top of it. It was like a, a Sabbath dish they would make. And 
it kind of reminds me of that because you've got that mutt rice and you do get that mm -hmm. mushroominess and it's and it's simple and i think that's like what i like it it's simple mm -hmm. it's not it's not unsophisticated right it's just simple which is right. I, I, yeah that's what i think what makes it feel elegant for me absolutely absolutely mm. to me as soon as i tried it i was like this is this is different and cool and uh my I went to go see my, my cousin uh, up there, and I said, hey, um, I need you to go back and see if there's another bottle uh, yeah. because I feel like this one's going to get ran through pretty fast. Now this, is, this is that exploration. This is, yeah. you know, the people that are out there looking for something that everyone else wants to have. Yeah. It's, you know, that's fun mm -hmm. and fine um, when, it, when it's priced two to three times what uh, I'd rather give the money to the distillery that's doing something like this. Right, right, right. That right. They're, they're creating their own craft. This is, like you said, seed to sip, farm to table. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting story. And sharing this is so much better than sharing Oh, I found an elusive thing yeah. that's made by a giant corporation yeah. that uh, everybody else wants to get and try and they're yeah. hiding it, they're not opening it. Right, right. Yeah, no, it's it's and it's just it's just good. It's just like legitimately a good good whiskey. And and I will tell you this. Um, I talked to the, she is the, uh, what director of operations, who is the owner's daughter, mm -hmm. and she is a maniac for this company. You know, they're like fourth generation. She's like, I'm trying to build a heritage for my family, mm -hmm. and she's like. This, hopefully, this will take us there. This th this whiskey, and they are pushing it so hard, and she's so excited about it, and I see why now. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, she turned me into a fanboy pretty <laughs> pretty fast. Uh, yeah. That And that was without, I might have tried a small sample of it somewhere, but that was without trying it. And, uh, yeah, it was, I'm, I'm really impressed by it. The idea that it's been in the same family for 100-something, yeah. 130 years, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah. to try these outlying grains like that, like we were talking about the San Diego distillery, that one to me was lighter. It had like a orange citrus quality to it. Don't find it in this at all. No. So every different maker is going to come up, even if they're using the same ingredients, they're going to come up with something unique and special yeah. on their own. And uh, this is this is so much fun to explore. Absolutely. Thank you, Marshall. Or Marshall. Thank you, Randall. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you call me Marshall? Marshall, Marshall and Randall have this uh, have this competition. We do. Uh, and uh, they're both plumbers. Oh, we are. And is, that, is that a thing? Plumbers <laughs> and whiskey, I guess. Plumbers and whiskey. Well, see. see. <laughs> Okay, so there was recently there was the Andalusia uh, chili cook-off, and last year I won, and so I was coming to defend my title, and Marshall showed up uh, with his Hormel chili and threw it out there and ended up winning, <laughs> and um, I lost, and I didn't even get a sympathy vote or anything, uh, and so, so rematch gonna, next year. Rematch, absolutely. <laughs> right, I'm going right. to get some wolf, and we're going to come in there and... I'm going to have to go and make some kind of green chili chicken dish just to do <laughs> some, right, some right. vegan chili or something yeah. like that. Impo simply impossible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you brought some tea too, I yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you. Uh, Wait, we've are we got, trying to? We've trying got to? one more whiskey yeah, to do. try. Do you want right. to tie them together? No, let's, let's make okay. a separate episode. Let's a separate episode? Yeah. Separate, oh, episode. Separate, episode. separate episode. Separate episode. Well, thanks again. Uh -huh. Let's move on to the next whiskey and the next tea. Awesome. Join us here. Now. <laughs>